Why are so many First Nations, and even some Canadians, so restless? Why so many protests? The Conservative government is currently battling the Council of Canadians in court for elections fraud in the 2011 federal elections. Federal elections. Federal elections. Although Prime Minister Harper once stated that omnibus bills are a contradiction to the conventions and practices of the House, he just recently passed two, passed two. Bill C-38 and C-45. A major change that has recently been made in those bills is the reductions and eliminations of Canada's environmental safety nets. Like for example, 99% of the federal protection on Canadian waterways has been eliminated. More reduction to voting rights for the First Nations over their lands and resources. Greenpeace exposed the oil and gas industry's role when they uncovered a letter through access to information, asking the federal government to overhaul Canada's environmental laws and make amendments to the Indian Act. Five of the six requests have since been complied with. The Alberta tar sands has been called the most destructive project on Earth ever. ever, ever, ever. NASA scientist James Hansen has reviewed the facts and concluded that the Canadian tar sands contain twice the amount of carbon dioxide emitted by global oil use in our entire history, and that exploitation of this resource would mean game over for the climate. Do we realize what game over means? There is no planet B to try again. Today's PAHs, well-known cancer-causing carcinogens, are 23 times higher in Alberta's lakes near the tar sands than they were in 1960, 20 years before tar sand extraction began. A contradiction to the claims made by the tar sands industry that the source of carcinogens in lakes is natural. Two-mouthed and tumor-ridden fish found in lakes near tar sands. Canada's Ministry of Health in June said that it would investigate rising rates of cancer among the residents in Fort Chipewyan, which borders the oil sands region and is home to about 1,200 people. Corporations and their sycophants in the media, academia and government keep selling us that we have to choose between jobs and our environment. According to the Political Economy Research Institute at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, investment in a green infrastructure program would create nearly four times as many jobs as an equal investment in oil and gas. It's just not as profitable for the oil and gas conglomeration. For example, the solar industry continues to be an engine of job growth, creating jobs six times faster than the overall job market. It's more than possible to build an economic system that provides people with good and fulfilling work, all the while respecting Mother Earth. If we don't seek that balance now, it seems likely that good jobs will be the least of the worries for our great-grandchildren. Over 50,000 Indigenous children died while forcibly attending residential schools. They suffered unspeakable abuse and torture by the hands of Christian men and women who were supported by the Canadian government. The ones that survived to tell about it have had a lifetime of pain and suffering. Yet despite many living victims and living perpetrators, there have been zero, zero, zero prosecutions. prosecutions. Instead of justice for the survivors and the families of the dead children, a healing fund was issued and a public apology from the current Prime Minister. In 2008, Prime Minister Harper offered a public apology to the residential school survivors and their families at the House of Commons. In it, he admits, The treatment of children in Indian residential schools is a sad chapter in our history. Two primary objectives of the residential school system were to remove and isolate children from the influence of their home, families, traditions, and cultures, and to assimilate them into the dominant culture. These objectives were based on the assumption that Aboriginal cultures and spiritual beliefs were inferior and unequal. Indeed, some saw it, as was infamously said, to kill the Indian in the Chata. Today, we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm, and has no place in our country. Can you even imagine this? Someone in the name of the law and civilization steals and murders your child, and the only justice you are entitled to after many years of fighting is an insincere apology and some healing fund. I say insincere because how does that even attempt sincerity? 
Oh, sorry, we raped, tortured, and murdered many of your children, but we will not investigate and prosecute. Here's some money for healing purposes. And it doesn't end there. Presently, one of the most difficult epidemics we face in our communities is the loss of so many of our youth. Many living in squalor without much access to social programs, without much support or self-esteem, find comfort in drugs and alcohol. And if they're not that lucky, they find it in suicide. Suicide rates for Indigenous youth in Canada are among the highest in the world, at 11 times the national average. Should you overcome those odds, and if you are an Indigenous woman in Canada, you face being seven times more likely to die violently. And yet still, Prime Minister Harper opposes an inquiry. If you were born an Indigenous person living in Canada, you are more likely to go to jail than to graduate high school. We make up 22% of the incarcerated, even though we are less than 3% of the population. Canada's historical and present treatment of Indigenous people is despicable and an embarrassment, and an embarrassment to, all to all Canadians. This is part of the assimilation plan. Despite what you may think, it's still in full effect. The Canadian government have never eliminated it as they would have you believe. They've just changed its strategy over the years, modernized it. While some of the termination policies remain the same, there are new policies in place as well. The new face of assimilation is far more subtle, but the results are still a fact of assimilation. Just not as incriminating as stealing and abusing children in the name of civilization and modernization. Now it looks more like chronic underfunding to First Nations communities across the whole sociological and economic spectrum. Consistently amending legislation that reduces the federal government's recognition of our inherent and sovereign rights to our lands and the ability to self-govern and rebuild. Despoliation of our lands and resources with only empty promises of fair sharing. Failing to protect our youth and women in denial of equal justice. Smear campaigns against First Nations via the media to fuel Canadians' apathy and turn us on each other. Unwillingness to share fairly, live peacefully together in mutual respect, and failure to take significant and consistent steps in rebuilding our nation-to-nation -nation relationship, even though many human rights groups, including the UN, strongly recommends doing so. Assimilation is a denial of the principles of peace, harmony and justice for which this country stands. The message from Canada to First Nations people is loud and clear. Live unequally with more odds stacked against you while clinging to your unequal and inferior cultural and spiritual beliefs or assimilate into the dominant culture and maybe then shall you have the same opportunities and deserve the same justice as your fellow Canadian. For the majority of us on Guahoe, we would face death before we would ever be completely assimilated. And that ultimately has nothing to do with government, money, corporations, or legislation, but has everything to do with our personal and collective connections and relationships with the Creator, Mother Earth, each other, and all living things. We live as who we are, the people God made us, or we don't live at all. Actions speak louder than words, and all too often Prime Minister Harper's actions completely contradict his words. This is a man, through his actions, has shown us. He values money over human health and life. He lies, neglects commitments, and does not stand by what he says. He does not respect the Canadian Constitution. He still believes Indigenous people are inferior and do not deserve equal treatment. And he does not respect the Canadian public. This is the man leading Canada. This is the government representing Canadians and their interests to the entire world. The sad reality is that most people stay informed through the mainstream media, but unfortunately they do not fully realize that the media often gets paid by and answers to the very same corporations and governments they should be reporting on and exposing truths about. Often what the media doesn't report can be just as misleading as false reports. We don't need any more sad chapters in our history. We no longer need to be the victims of deceitful government or criminal corporations. Let us unite in our vision to create a healthy place to live for all our children, with equal opportunities and freedoms, a truly peaceful and harmonious coexistence with each other and with our environment. It's more than possible. It's absolutely necessary. 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 We are currently raising funds to rent billboards across Canada, starting in Ontario, that will empower the Canadian public with information the media can't or won't.
It is our hope that a well-informed public will pressure the government, the media, and the international oil and gas industries to 1. Re-establish Canada's respect and protections for our environment. 2. Prioritize more sustainable earth business practices. 3. Protect and respect the Canadian Constitution. 4. Begin to rebuild the nation-to-nation -nation relationship between First Nations and Canadians. It costs approximately between $1,400 and $2,000 to rent a large horizontal billboard in Hamilton, Ontario for four weeks. We will start with the goal of one billboard and with your help we will achieve this, raise awareness and continue raising funds for many more billboards, first in Ontario and then across Canada. Raising the consciousness of people to be more self-aware is part of our evolution. Let's make it easy for people not to remain in the comfort of ignorance. The age of destruction, greed, indifference and inequality is coming to an end. It's the end of that era and the beginning of a new one, a knowledgeable one. Knowledge is true power. Truth is true freedom. Unity is true peace.